Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ed Yim, President of American Composers Orchestra, and we're delighted to have you for Chapter 7 of Volume 1 of Connecting ACO Community. Um, we have a great, great work to premiere today for you uh, with the Brooklyn Youth Chorus, directed by Diane Birkin Maneker, uh, featuring Anthony Roth Costanzo, a new work by Carlos Simon. Before I introduce our collaborators today, I just want to give you a few tips and to thank a few people. Uh, in terms of tips, if you are Zoom veterans by this point, uh, we have enabled stereo sound. So if you go into your audio settings, uh, you can click on stereo sound to improve your experience. And we also wanna encourage you to use the chat button at the bottom of your screen to let us know where you're tuning in from, um, share your reactions with, uh, with your fellow listeners. And also, since we can't hear your applause at the end of the piece, um, please use the chat button to uh, say bravo or yay or whatever emotion you're feeling at that point. We also have a Q&A button and throughout this uh, about half hour broadcast, uh, we will be collecting your questions and putting them to the artist and the composer uh, towards the end of the uh, session. So a few thank yous. Connecting ACO Community was made possible by a lead gift from our board member, Augusta Gross, and her husband, Leslie Samuels. We want to say thank you to them. We were also uh, supported by the New York City Community Trust Relief and Impact Fund, and we want to thank them and the Consortium of Foundations who participated in that. Uh, I also want to thank especially Brian Loesch and Jeremy Robbins, uh, who helped us put this video together today. And I wanna thank the team at Brooklyn Youth Chorus and of course the team at American Composers Orchestra who worked so hard, not only on this, but on all seven chapters of volume one. Volume two was just announced. And if you go to uh, the bit.ly link, ACO Connect, or go to our website, you can see the lineup for the next uh, six chapters of Connecting ACO Community. And we will also be announcing volume three later in the summer uh, which will feature many of the musicians of American Composers Orchestra and bringing them into this uh, project and this celebration of creativity. And now I would like to welcome uh, our collaborators, Diane Birkin Meneker, Anthony Roth Costanzo, and composer Carlos Simon. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us, Ed. Thank you for being here. Diane, how are you? I'm well, as could be expected. Good. Hey, Carlos. Hey, Ed. Nice to see all of you. I want to um, I want to let our audience who's listening in today certainly uh, absorb and experience the piece without us telling them what to feel or think. Um, but I would like to talk a little bit about putting it together, um, as Stephen Sondheim would say. And I'd like to start with you, Anthony. Can you tell us when we gave you a list of all of the composers that we've worked with at ACO over the past five years or so. Um, and Carlos was on that list and you, you did your homework assiduously and listened to a bunch of stuff. What was it about Carlos's music that drew you to him and suggest him for doing this project? Well, there's such a wonderful list that ACO has from cultivating these relationships with composers. So I got to discover all kinds of wonderful people listening to this music, but I was immediately struck by the sophistication of Carlos's work. I was listening to some of his orchestral work, which was just amazing, but it also encompassed a whole breadth of styles. Um, and that's how I feel a, a sort of uh, interdisciplinary crossing genre person. And I, I felt a kindred spirit there. Um, and especially when we're making this digital work, I thought, as a vocalist, I don't know that I want to do something purely a cappella because somehow that doesn't, with bad microphones and little rooms and apartments, it doesn't necessarily flatter. And so I thought this is someone who I know will come up with the right way together. We can come up with the right way um, to execute this. Right. Terrific. Um, Carlos, when we first came to you and said, um, we'd like you to write something for Anthony Roth Costanzo and members of the Brooklyn Youth Chorus, um, what was your first reaction where you're like, wow, that's, were you thinking that's really challenging or that's, you know, that's exactly what I want to do or, you know, just tell, tell me what your first thoughts were when we approached you about this. Yeah, well, I mean, I was, first of all, I was astonished, you know, it's always an honor to have someone, 
email or, or call and say, hey, we'd love to, for you to write something completely new. We don't know what it's going to be, but we want you to write something. Um, and then, I mean, but secondly, it's, it's like amazing uh, artists to work with. You know, I, um, on our first phone call with Anthony, I, I mentioned that he, as, as composers, you know, you always have a list of people that you want to work with. You know, it's like a bucket list, a wish list. And um, I, he was definitely on the list. So, I mean, I, the universe conspired in a way that I, I hadn't even imagined so quickly. And, you know, listening to um, uh, the Brooklyn Youth Chorus and just getting the sound in my ear, it's just amazing. Two great um, artists, you know, the great group of artists, rather, and and I was really blown away at getting the opportunity to, to create something new and fresh, and uh, this that speak, speaks to me as an artist, and um, yeah, it's was an amazing opportunity. That's awesome. Um, uh, we know you at ACO, certainly, uh, mostly for your orchestral work. You were in our Underwood New Music reading sessions, and you won the commission, and we commissioned Portrait of a Queen from you. But is choral music something in your background or something that you work in often? Uh, not often. I So I'm the son of a preacher. Um, and my, my dad um, he started the church and, and many, many years ago and when I was young. And so he I was enlisted to play organ. You know, I was uh, in, in the church. So I, indirectly, I was sort of forced into this choral world of, you know, working with the choir. Um, of course, I sang in, in Glee Club in college and was an accompanist for that, for the Glee Club then. And, um, but as of late, I haven't written a lot of choral music. It's been orchestral and, and chamber music, um, but it is a love of mine. I love, I love singing in my own, uh, the privacy of my own home. It's not for public, public consumption <laughs> at all, <laughs> uh, but I love working with, with voice. Um, and it's just it's a special a uh, special, you know, um, medium that, that really speaks to me you know, on a very visceral level. Yeah, I'm a choral singer myself, actually. So it's, it's really, it's really special uh, to work in this medium. And, um, you know, what is a chorus but an orchestra of voices, right? So I feel like we're on mission uh, in supporting this work. Diane, hi, tell us a little bit about the relationship between your chorus and Anthony which is very special and um, and and goes back a, a bit now with with many layers. Yeah, uh, it's definitely very special, made special, um, really because of who Anthony is, um, not just as a uh, talented performer, obviously, but um, the generosity that he brings to uh, gifting music to the community, to the young people that he encountered through the chorus. Um, and doing doing so with for all the right reasons um, to really involve the community at large and to um, support the development of, of young singers, of future young artists. So we we met officially artistically through the Akhenaten project. Um, obviously, uh, he was just the lead um, in the Philip Glass Opera at the Met, and they decided to do a project. I believe that was of Anthony's. Uh, thinking about how that could be brought uh, in to reach larger audiences. And so he collaborated with um, with the chorus on music from Akhenaten, but also uh, involved, the, let the chorus uh, be involved in a larger way, including another work by Philip Glass. Um, and so that involved uh, really our getting to know him as an artist. He masterclassed with our students uh, which was incredibly valuable in terms of their learning uh, about the piece, the history of the music, but even how to perform it and to provide such an incredible role model of how one would sing and interpret music. Um, so after that, uh, he also then agreed to be guest artist at our annual season uh, Winter's Eve concert and performed with three of our ensembles together on music. We kind of came up with uh, on a rel short notice um, and did this beautiful concert and um, the the people in our community and the audience were so touched and so moved by the work that he did. So uh, when he involved, when he thought about involving us in this project, um, we couldn't have been happier. So here we are again and um, thrilled. Yeah. As each of the three of you are speaking, it suddenly occurs to me that um, that 
one of the beautiful things about this particular constellation of creativity and artists is that we have projects in various degrees of development with each of you. Um, Diane, Brooklyn Youth Chorus and ACO have been talking about collaborating. Anthony, we've got a commission in the works for you. Carlos, we've co-commissioned your orchestral work on men, which we will give the New York premiere of as soon as we can. So it's wonderful um, to feel that sense of, of connection on many layers with each of you. Um, great. Uh, I am going to, without further ado, um, play uh, the video of Another Rising, and then we're going to talk about it afterwards. Um, and uh, uh, enjoy everyone. Here's the world premiere performance of Another Rising by Carlos Simon, uh, setting a poem of uh, Sakunatari Sve. Um, and Carlos, when we come back, you're going to teach me how to pronounce that correctly. Here we go. Give me one second, we're having a moment. everyone. Uh, give me one second to fix this and we will be right back.
Excellent. Everyone see that? I was having a little technical difficulty in my home studio. <laughs> That's just Zoom. Yes. Oh, oops. Hello? We got gotcha. you. Good. Okay. Bravo, everyone. Um, I, we're getting so many beautiful comments on the chat page. Uh, people saying, bravo, so beautiful, fabulous, et cetera, et cetera. Um, before we take any questions from the audience, um, Diane, can you just briefly tell us how you rehearsed all your kids um, to, to prepare this and the process that you brought this fabulous ensemble together? So this um, project originated uh, after, obviously, we had already moved all of our instruction online, which was a little more challenging than some of the other projects that we had already begun and then finished virtually. Um, and so the process was um, pretty much the way we would prepare any piece of music in that, you know, the students are still having weekly rehearsals, they're working on their vocalizing every week, their musicianship skills. Um, so I took the score from Carlos, uh, you know, did all the markings so that everybody was looking at the same thing. Um, we would go through the score in our online rehearsals, um, give them uh, the ability to practice at home with some uh, guide tracks that we would create um, and then they were asked to submit recordings and um, if you haven't done that before it's actually not as simple as you think to get a really clean performance uh, recording from beginning to end most of us don't have the ability to um, you know piece it together on our own so it was like do it till you get it till you get it right from start to finish and that includes not only notes and rhythms but musicality and then once we collect all the individual videos um, the on audio engineer needs to strip the audio from the video so that that can be um, kind of aligned and take out extraneous noise from people's homes or their recording devices while the audio uh, sorry the video engineer then creates the composite uh, of what you see on screen until it can be married back together so there's quite a lot of labor for the virtual chorus projects but there's also much to learn about it and a really nice opportunity for choral singers um, to actually record as soloists, which I've which I've come to really appreciate. Yeah, that's great. We're all learning new skills during this time, aren't we? Yeah. Um, Carlos, I want to take a moment to um, ask you about the poem that you set, which you asked a friend specifically to write for this project. It was not an existing poem. Is is that right? That's right. Yeah. It's um. So um, when um. Uh, you know, I wanted to when we got the um, yeah when you when we all received the the the, the email to do this and, uh, and write the piece. I you know I was I wanted to write something that was sort of uplifting and because I was in a funk um, and I wanted to write something prayerful but solemn. Um, and so you know, I, a friend of mine and uh, I, we hadn't. This is our first time working together actually. Um, we um, had been participants in an in intensive, uh, opera intensive, uh, like sort of uh, similar to the Underwood readings where you're, you're sort of paired with uh, a mentor composer and but well, she's a writer. So they had a librettist uh, uh, mentor as well. So, but we, we, weren't work, we didn't work together then, but we were just sort of cohorts in the, in the group. And I loved her work and I was like, listen, we have to work together in some way because you, her stuff was amazing. Uh, uh, but so cool. Um, so her name is Sokun Tare Sle. So that's, you asked me how to pronounce that, but uh, she's Cambodian and she, I asked her to do this and she came up with something like 24 hours and in 24 hours. And it, it was exactly what I was looking for, sort of strophic form, um, hymn like. Um, and it had this positive message, messaging to it. And, of course, I sent it to uh, Anthony, and he was like, yeah, this is, this is definitely this is something that speaks to me. And um, the challenge was how to set the text in a way that, that's, that wasn't um, trite or that was, you know, in a way still art, artful and um, still had depth and meaning to it, you know. Um, a lot of times text can take on a different meaning, and I, I didn't want it to be that you know, I wanted to have some type of weight to it, um, musically speaking. Um, Great, yeah, amazing. Um, so we've just posted in the chat box uh, the text of the the poem, 
that you've set um, and the name of uh, Soku, um, I did it. You can do an internet search on her and find her other wonderful work out there. Um, Anthony, I'm gonna go to you first with this question, um, which uh, it came from our audience, which is a very deep question and you can, you, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a big question, um, but please all of you feel free to answer it at any level that you wish, which is that um, this listener said that another rising really imagines a new world, um, a better world. And for us as artists, as administrators, as leaders, um, as creators in the art community, what's the thing that you hope will be different in another rising that will, that will change when we come out of this and the dust settles? Well, being in quarantine, um, one thing we recognize even more than usual is how making art and music is a community act. It's something that happens as an interaction between people in a space. And um, I think that uh, I've felt strongly, I've sort of dedicated my career, as Diane was saying earlier, to trying to find new audiences for classical music, which has its own perceived elitism. And a lot of that is true. And then there are ways in which the form itself I don't think is in any way elite. I think it can connect to lots of people. And this piece that Carlos has written is a great example of that. And so um, I think that that has to permeate everything we do. It can't just be an education initiative or community initiative, that everything we create in the arts has to be with uh, the lens, not of making it accessible, but of connecting it to different communities. I think people often confuse those things. We think, well, this isn't accessible. I don't actually believe that the work has to be accessible. It can be the most abstract, most alienating work. But if there's a point of access for these different communities, then their viewpoints start to be represented in the way that we create art. And there's much more of a community that goes beyond just the people making the art and extends beyond our, our core. So um, as we rebuild, I think it's an opportunity to do lots of things, including think that way. So we, we have learned during this time to create new kinds of access points to what we do. And hopefully we will learn from that and take that with us into, the, into the new, another rising. Carlos, Absolutely. what about Carlos? What about you? What do you hope for in music or in the world or whatever in the new landscape when it emerges? Well, my hope is always that we um, just become more empathetic, or just sympathetic of of each other, and to just really acknowledge that everyone has a voice, and 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 it's different. You know, that's what this American American experience experiment is all about, you know, and um, just really tapping into that on the artistic level um, and other levels as well in our society. And I, I'm so grateful for the ACO family and just championing, you know, uh, being, and being inclusive uh, and commissioning composers of color and women and just having many different voices to, to speak to this American um, uh, experiment. And, um, and we are greatly honored and, and, and appreciative of your coming into our community and, and being part of, uh, being part of this musical experiment that, that we all are involved in. Diane, what do you hope for? You work with kids every day. You must think about the future of the arts and about music and about the world every day working with those kids. What do you hope for them? I mean, I think I, I really believe that the arts humanize us and um, that aesthetic education, that uh, sensitivity that one learns participating in the arts, um, I think that that enables uh, people, especially when they make art together and this kind of model of humanity that a, a, a collective music collective can be, that I think that really contributes to creating citizens that rise above um, some of these kind of petty differences and divisions that exist. I think the arts do does that in a way that nothing else can. So, um, you know, when you work in my situation with students from every walk of life in the city, 
Um, they all come from different backgrounds and different musical experiences. And, you know, Anthony talks about accessibility. There are some kids um, who maybe never heard classical music at all before joining the chorus and, and uh, maybe kids where they never experienced world music um, before or never sang music by a living composer, or never sang music by a woman composer or a composer of color. All these experiences they're having in this educational environment just reframe their, their whole kind of educational and aesthetic uh, education and what they're taking, what they're putting in and what they're taking out, the relationships that they're forming, the broadening of their world experience, their worldview. And I think um, now, not only, you know, this kind of unfortunate collision of, uh, you know, a world crisis around uh, our, our health and our safety um, and a world crisis around um, the political situation, the, the unrest uh, that we're experiencing now amongst, um, you know, the, the rioting as a, an inevitable outgrowth of what happens when people aren't humanized in that way to work together and to see where the commonalities are and to take and respect from each other and to, you know, throw it all into the pot and see what you can make. Um, and I have always hoped that Brooklyn Youth Chorus was going to be uh, a place for that, a place where everybody brings something unique to the pot and we make some wonderful soup. Um, and, you know, in this format that you've created here, not only do we get to work with a wonderful composer that we didn't prior have a relationship with, um, but young people get, you know, to work with a professional of the highest caliber, um, and to have the standard of artistry set so high that, you know, it's showing them respect that we think they can handle music uh, performed by and composed by great talents like this. And that organizations such as ACO is not only uh, willing to invest in them for their sake, but to uh, show the rest of the world the contributions that young people can make. So um, I guess what I hope comes from <laughs> from this and, and the, the rising and the new day uh, is that these young people will continue to go out with their music, with their confidence building um, and, and the support that they have had in, in being heard and be that positive force of change. Amen. And I hope for that too. And I will add to what all the three of you were saying that um, this experiment of which uh, you all are concluding volume one, um, is about collaboration. And I hope that we have learned from this the past couple of months that we're stronger if we collaborate together and if we join hands uh, in what we all believe in instead of just each of us doing our own separate thing, as good as that may be, um, we're stronger together. Um, thank you so much, all of you, Carlos, for a beautiful piece, Anthony, for being um, the artistic visionary that you are and, and creating the circumstances around this piece and Diane for the contributions and the leadership that your beautiful, beautiful kids uh, bring to our music world. Um, I'd like to conclude just by saying and remind you that um, we know these are tough times and, uh, and that everyone's struggling, um, but if you would like to support this project, um, and others like it. Um, there is a link in the chat box uh, showing you how you can uh, contribute to this project or other projects like it at ACO. And that I want to remind you that you can watch the replay of this performance uh, for at least six months uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, ACO's channels, and we'll give those links to the Brooklyn Youth Chorus and to Anthony and Carlos to share as well. Um, and it will also be living on Music on the Rebound, which is a online new music festival that's been going on for the past couple of months during this time. Everyone, thank you for spending the afternoon with us and for creating this beautiful music. And um, we love you and love having you part of the ACO community. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.